Hi, everybody. It is Craig Shoemaker. It is Enlightened Up, and we're here for you. We're here for you because we're trying to... My wife always says to me, don't say you're trying. Just do. You know? <laughs> what true. we're doing here is... This is the objective, this is the agenda, is to offer you something that is different than what's out there. What's out there is we're bombarded, we're commanded, we're demanded to get in line and do what they're telling you to do and all of that. We're just, we're in a whole other space. We're creating a whole other space. A lot of this is bringing in friends and people I admire and I trust and, you know, people that I might not know well, I might know them well, but here's where we get to know them and we they're going to share their experiences and all of their enlightenment that they've had and also their dark times, their suffering and all that. It's all here for you. And that's what I am doing. That's what we are doing. We're doing this as a collective. We're really getting a movement. It's a laughter heals movement. It really is about the healing powers of laughter. It's so important to have more of it. I encourage you to have it. I also encourage you to pass the word around us. It just all it does. You just press a little a little button. That's all. You know, a like a little love, uh, something like that, and you tell a few friends. That's all we ask. It's free. Okay, this is free, and uh, so is life. So we got to get out of these jails that we're in, and uh, this is how to do it. We do it through laughter, levity, and light. And who better to do that? One of my favorites. And another <laughs> thing I love about this show is like I'm going to get to know you in the next yeah. 35, 40 minutes because I, I know you, don't yeah. know you, you know, that but kind of thing. But probably the most we've ever talked one-on-one -on -one ever. So, yeah. Exactly. That's no one else around. There's no Mark Eddy playing guitar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mutual friend of yeah. ours. I'm going to have him on here, too. Mark is one of my favorite people. I just texted him the other like an hour ago. So yeah, yeah, of course we yeah. do. We yeah. always text Mark at Mark Eddy. He's the nicest guy on the planet. He is. But um, I have to tell you right out of the gate, and I did this with Chris Spencer, just know you're not alone. I, you have people that you admire, like from afar, right? I know that sure. you do. We yeah, all yeah, do. Yeah. And it's oh my, I, that's, it's not like fanboy stuff, but it really is something that. And I do think that we do need to acknowledge when this takes place. So Chris Spencer was here, mm -hmm. and I said, the greatest talk show host I've ever been, you know, been on a show I've ever seen. He's the greatest I've ever seen. I mean, I know that sounds weird, Johnny Carson and all that. I said, Chris, you're the greatest. I, I, he was an unbelievable was interviewer. Was it Vibe? Is that yeah, what he did? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He did a show I, called Vibe. I have a story about that, but go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. So, and I, anyway, I have got to tell you, greatest game show host I've ever seen. Oh, well, see, that means a lot. You know, Street Smarts, which nobody, is a, Nobody yeah, better than you, how great you were on your feet. No game show host could be as good as you are. Well, you know, th Craig, thank you. That means a lot coming from you. You know, the thing with Street Smarts, we, you know, we did the pilot in 1999, and I was hired to help produce and write the pilot. And it was for Warner Brothers, Scott St. John, who I had produced oh. and written a show for. I remember you know, Yeah, and sure. I had produced and written a show over at the Game Show Network called Faux Paws. And Paws was P-A-U-S-E. So we had two hosts, Sean Donnell and Mary Gallagher, and they would watch old game shows from the GSN vault and then pause and make jokes about it. Oh. Almost like a talk suit, but it was one episode of a game show. I mean, I like the, that. It was a fun show. And the kind of game shows we're talking here, there was one game show in the 70s these were shows that weren't in rotation on GSN, but they owned. And there was one called Three's a Crowd, and it was a boss, his wife, and his secretary. And they would ask questions, who knew him the best? The secretary <laughs> or the wife? I mean, it was just total 70s. It sounds like a little creepy, too. Yeah, oh, like so like creepy. little mad men kind oh, of thing. Totally. The, the, the clothing, the vibe. Yeah. I, you know, he probably got a patter on the ass on the way out. You know. <laughs> so we would pause and we would do these little sketches. And, and, and I was writing them all. So I would always, you know, write lines for them to do these little flashbacks or we'd green screen them into the actual game show. And then I'd always write a third part for myself. So it yeah, was like, of hey, we, well, Frank's here. He can do it. <laughs> right. So I'm like, well, I'm the producer and the writer, so I'll do it. And then Scott got to know me that way, and then he called me for Street Smarts. He said, hey, I'm doing this pilot for Warner Brothers. It's, uh, can you help me write and produce it? And I said, no, because I just, no, I was in it. I had just gotten a job with a uh, dot .com uh, doing comedy content called Load Media, which is, uh, you know, coming. It's oh, gone. this had to have been 2000. It was 99. Yeah, it was right around then. I also worked for a dot com. Yeah. And they all had tons of money there. Right. Oh, ton. Burning they money. threw money at Burning. They didn't want Crazy you to leave time. the building, so they would stock it with food. You could bring your, your laundry in, and they'd throw yeah. in a lot, and you, they'd do your laundry they'd for they'd have you. a concierge service, whatever it took. They <laughs> had so much money. Unbelievable. But it was an illusion of money. That was yes. the worst part about it. I used to say to myself, well, you know, because the, there's nothing sold, yeah. you know what I mean? We come from Pennsylvania. Yeah, exactly. You know, you right. got steel, you're selling, <laughs> you're mining shit. Yeah. You know, and you sell the goods and the wares. And this you're going, 
What, air. You're worth that? Yeah. For, for, for air? <laughs> and I, I no don't, idea I don't with get... streaming. And I, and exactly. I, yeah, it was brand new it, then. It yeah. was crazy. And we made I worked these, for like, Comedy World. I'm sure you remember them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a similar thing. Yes. Yeah. So, and we, so go ahead. And they wanted these filthy sketches, and I, I would do them. So I'm like, this is the future, right? So I'm like, I'm going to hold on to this TV. Yeah, I don't need to do that. So he gave my friend the job to help him write and produce. But then... They started to need field stuff, right? So they needed, you know, the, the show, if you never, Street Smarts was man on the street, asking people questions. And Leno and, and Stern, they were kind of doing their own thing. Sure. So they made a game show. So they said, well, bring Frank in, even though he can't come in and help write and produce a TV show. I'd rather work at this fucking stupid dot com thing. So I go, all right, um, yeah, I'll come in and do some footage. So we would go with the video camera to Burbank and right on like San Fernando by the media center. And we'd interview people and do it. So Warner Brothers loved the footage. And they're like, this guy's good. Maybe we'll use him for the pilot as one of the field reporters. So I'm like, okay, I'll try to, you know, I'll, I'll, yes, all right, that'd be great. So in the meantime, the dot com bubble's starting to burst, or at least with this crazy guy who owns the sure. company. And this guy would give everyone a beeper, and you had to be on call. It was this little mad scientist, this guy Morgan from Ohio. He was a psycho. And, and he to, owned this. He dot owned com. the company. He was so the, he has multi millions. He was the genius that came up with the code and, you know, all yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Stuff. So he, <laughs> so he gave everyone beepers, and you had to be on call 24-7, seven days a week, to be at his beck and call. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's like the coders. And I'm like, the comics and us who are trying to come up with the material, I mean, we got weekends off, and I'm doing shows. So I remember it was like, you know, Saturday afternoon, I'm at my cousin's house. You know, I lived with my cousin. We're having a party, and there's people over, and I get beeped, and I don't call it back. So I show up Monday, and he fires me, and I flip out. I flip out. I'm like, are you, I'm like, this is ridiculous. How dare you? And, not, and he goes to grab his phone to call security. And I knocked the phone off the desk. No. He was much smaller than me. So I felt like I could do that. Wow. Yeah, That's I, saying something, he, by the way. He <laughs> must have been a jockey. Exactly. You're not, exa if you're not watching and you're exactly. just listening, Frank is probably like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, five, my license says 5'7", and that's generous. Okay, we'll all right, so five, that's six generous. And a half. This guy is five, two. literally at Del Mar Billy on Barty. weekends. Yeah, okay. I just threw Billy Barty uh, okay. out there. I, there's for, a reference for you. <laughs> I'm staying current for the kids. But anyway, so so now I, that, I get rid of that. So that company, it's like basically get fired or quit. Who knows? But I was I was a, I was a hero because everyone heard the fight up in this idiot who had you know fired a bunch of people. Yeah. So I'm literally like, they almost want to like carry me. Yeah. So a week later, after he sees all the footage that the editors hadn't gotten to of all these field pieces I would do, he wouldn't get them back. And in the meantime, Scott says, look, we'll, we'll hire you on to help us full time on the. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I got to grasp this. Right. Which I was stupid to say no the first time at the lunch at Islands in Burbank. So I come and I start doing the footage and then I'm doing all the footage for the test footage. And then they're looking for hosts and they brought a ton of guys in to test for host in the studio. And one day a couple of hosts didn't, uh, comics didn't show up or whatever. And Warner Brothers was there and they're like, well, we're going to see the execution of the show. Why don't you have Frank do it? Now I had written the script. So they, they're like, wow, this kid nailed it. And it's like, well, I wrote the script and I, it was me on the screen with sure. all the footage. So it felt right. So it turned out they, they sold this show and right before Christmas, Scott called me into his office. He's like, look, we're going to have you not just be one of the field guys, but we're going to have you be the only field guy. And I went, oh, my God, that's great. And he goes, and you're going to host the and studio, host, and yeah. you're going to do the, the studio stuff. He's like, it's all on you. He that's goes, we awesome. have an eight-month schedule. Or goes, intimidating, yeah, one it, of the well, two. He said in the first six yeah. weeks, if it doesn't go well in the field, the show's sunk. But we're picked up for 170 episodes or whatever. Good luck. you know. And I hadn't, you know, I'd been doing stand-up at that point for, I don't know, 12 years. But, you know, this was like, I was... In the right place at the right time, ball was in my court, boom, I took it, right? So we went out and we did the, 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 all the footage. We started in January. We started at the Costco, not even uh, in Burbank. And then we went on the road. We went to Hawaii, New York, no. Miami. I oh, didn't yeah. Know that. Minnesota, State Fair. We did all the state fairs. We You're getting paid vacations. Paid vacations. This is awesome. Vegas for two or three weeks at a time. And we so all so much better than working for Billy Barty. Right. And listening to them. <laughs> so we all thought, man, this is going to be one. By year the way, uh, Google Billy Barty. Yes, he's a diminutive actor. Uh, okay, diminutive. Foul play. He was in foul play. Okay, the door to door Bible salesman. But he also <laughs> little was does a, Billy Barty know. Little rest in peace. does Billy Barty. No, <laughs> that, no pun intended. He's, that, he's half I of know, our show on a podcast. Yeah, okay. So anyway, I, I got the show, and you know, at the time, game show hosts were still guys in three piece suits. That's and, right. You know, Guy Smiley and, you know, stuff like that. So Wink Martindale. Wink Martindale, yeah, right, right, which I, I was Bob on a game show with Wink Martindale. Right. Yeah, Bob Eubanks. So I was kind of the first, like, regular guy. And, you know, they dressed me in bowling shirts, you know, which was very right. of yeah. the style. Yeah. You know, Matthew Perry was our, which, by the way, were very thick and heavy, BC ethic. And they chafed my nipples. So they would have to put tape on my nipples. 
Uh, in the studio, just a little fact. Could, little be, an o- fact. could be an overshare, but I'm, go- I'm down with it. So. <laughs> but I remember so, I would like take my shirt off at night and like, oh, shit. That's and not my recollection of those shirts. You must have had a different brand. I've, they were, th- some of them were very Tommy heavy. Tommy Bahamas. Well, those were not, see, those are silk. You were doing top shelf there. But these are like heavy, scratchy <laughs> with the s- bad <laughs> stitching because they were just pumping bowling shirts out. And they'd give me a ton to wear. What are you on, uh, UPN or something? And they don't have a budget for <laughs> to get you a silk? Well, we had a Is lot of that episodes. Big of a to fill. So we, you know, we had to change shirts put all you the time. In burlap in the instead yeah. of, uh, you know, but it felt like burlap to my my sensitive areas. Chafing but, but, nipples. Okay. But the show, you know, and and I got a lot of feedback. And you know, we ended up getting celebrities on in the field. Like when we were in Vegas, we shot David Brenner. Now David Brenner, I grew up watching the Tonight Show. Sure. And it was Letterman, David Brenner, David Letterman, and David uh, Steinberg. Huge, right? Yeah. They were all so I idolized these guys. And he said, he came up to me right before doing the interview. He's headlining somewhere in Vegas, and he's like, I'm doing this show. Because when I get when I get off my show, I get back to the room. The show's on like three times a night here in Vegas, and it really was because it was on WGN. Oh, wow! And then the local station in Vegas showed it at like so one. He, and he four. wants to do the show because it's one of his favorite he shows. He actually enjoyed watching. He said, yeah. "I'm doing this because you're really funny." I loved funny. it too. Comedians really loved quick. it because it was on in our it hotel rooms the, when we're lonely. The weirdest time. And you're done with Spankavision right, at the time. Exactly. Remember at Spectravision? <laughs> so, oh yeah. And you would know how to how to get the porn. You know for what free. I would, But you know what I would do is what? I would travel with a VCR. A very cheap VCR when I would go on the road. And what you could do is you can unhook the cable from the SpectraVision yeah. box. Now, sometimes there was like a bolt that protected it, but a house key could take the hexagon like nut and you this could lose it. This is how much it. time we yeah. have as comedians <laughs> I know. to so, actually uh, think yes. out our porn so you could take in it, advance. Yep. And then yeah. you would take that cable from the SpectraVision that was yeah. kind of locked, put it into a VCR, and then you'd go to the higher channels on the VCR, and those were the higher frequencies that all the porn was on and all the pay-per-view movies. And then I could just hit record, but I could only get something. And this was when it wasn't it wasn't like nonstop on channel, so it was only when somebody in the hotel would order it. So I'd be in the hotel room after a gig and just like constantly checking channels like 73, 80. And it's like, oh, someone bought, uh, you know, oh, good, I can get this room. And then it was like, oh, good, they want porn. And one time we were traveling with Street Smarts, and I, I talked the next morning outside, talked about a porn, and the cameraman's like, hey, asshole, I'm the one who paid for that. You owe me half the money. Oh, no, no, he was joking. Oh, he was, right. I was like, oh, I saw this movie last night, whatever Hilarious. it was called. He goes, yeah, I'm the one who paid for that. You got to watch it for free. I'm like, thank you, Jeff. So David Brenner says Brenner to you, I on, love your show. And that's why he did it. So we had Brenner on, and we had, like, Amazing Jonathan who said he would do it. Sure, and, from Vegas yeah, also. Yeah, from Vegas also. We did a lot. Uh, Sinbad did it. Uh, in Vegas, and then of course we did a studio uh, show where we brought in comedians and celebs to play for charity. And you yourself were on, and you played. Yes, I uh, played against Steve Hostetter. Steve Hostetter. He and brought it up. Yeah. The other day, you know, like, like <laughs> we all have our things. Yeah, right. You know, we all hold on to things. <laughs> it kind of motivates us, right? When we're shamed or blamed or hurt or victimized <laughs> or whatever it is, we carry this with us. It yeah. motivates us. This guy's still motivated. I had I I actually forgot it maybe because I won. <laughs> I'm doing his podcast right. and he throws out you know he's quiet because it's Ben Glebe like kind of running yeah. things. Oh, I know I did that thing. And yeah, all of a sudden in club. the background here, yeah, I know you. <laughs> yeah, you beat me in street street smarts. <laughs> right. And he's a guy that relies on like people believing how smart he is. Right. And I love that I kicked that smart ass <laughs> glasses wearing comic. <laughs> I kicked his ass yeah. in street smarts. Nice. By the way, it doesn't make you any smarter. No. The, the word smart is in it, but oh, it was you're not. just guessing, you know, who's the bigger idiot, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. But but it was I, a fun but, show though, and you were so good at yeah, it. And you were I good appreciate. in the studio. Yeah, and that and, and the studio stuff, man, that was all new to me. Uh you know, I think I had read a prompter. I did a pilot. Oh, I did a pilot for Pat Sajak called Blackjack Bowling. Mm-hmm. And it was blackjack and bowling combined. So wow. you would get a card and say you'd get a 10. And we had a card girl that would turn it. And then you bowled. So if you got like a sure. strike, it was a 10 and you had a 20, you know. Yeah, got so it. it was it was crazy. So that That's was hilarious. my first prompter experience. So anyway, <laughs> but I made a lot of mistakes that first season. I got to know the cameramen uh, really well. Some of them I'm still friends with, even on Facebook. And they're like, you know, we would make bets. We'd have like an over under how many times you'd screw up in the studio just on simple ins and outs and tosses sure. and stuff. And, you know, I remember I'd make a mistake and from like a dark corner, I'd hear a camera and go, yes. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, what happened? And, and I didn't find out till like a year later. <laughs> They're like, Oh yeah, we'd bet on how many times you'd screw up. But you know, by the time, but by the season two or three, we did five seasons. We were, we, instead of just doing six shows a day, most shows you do three, you break for lunch, you do another three. Well, we would try to do four or five before lunch. So, you know, whatever the union would let us. 
Then it got to the point towards the end, they're like, we're going to do six in a row without lunch. Everyone gets out at one instead of five, you know, whatever. And we would do it because we were like shooting them in real time. But, but I had a good time. I had the best time and people still, you know, know the show and come up to me. And here's something I, I might not have told you, but we did a pilot for a reboot two years ago, right? Oh. Right before late 19, or summer of 2019. And it was really? myself in the field. We sh- I, so I went up to City Walk and I'm shooting the show with the Street Smarts Mike Cube, which was really surreal to see again. And then for the field, for the studio stuff, they had Jeff Foxworthy hosted in Atlanta. Really? And he, you know, he shoots everything in Atlanta because he lives there. And I've never seen the Sizzler. I've never seen it at all. They shot a pilot. I apparently, apparently I was told it was great. So they're like, all right, we're going to take this out and sell it. And they were getting bites on it. And then uh, COVID crept in and, you know, that, that took care of that. Now, whether they're oh, still trying to do Because you can't interview people now. Right. I mean, think about that show idea. Standards. A crew <laughs> going yeah, around you have the a streets big boom of America. microphone to yeah. six feet. And there's people there's, gathered around. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah so that's not going to work. I hope they're still trying to sell. I've never seen it. I mean, you know, they're like, well, we can't really show it to you. And on I'm a like, personal oh, note, it sounds weird, but I want to ask you this question. I was thrown out of City Walk for, <laughs> did you, I, mean, no. I mean, for doing, I did a pilot there. Oh, really? Yeah, an on the street kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, um, but I was thrown out, and they actually followed me trying to get our footage. Because we tried to run away from right. them, I ran into Lovitz's club at a club <laughs> yeah, there. But I, I literally ran away from them. They were up the escalator after me. Oh my god! To give us that footage. I go, no, I'm not giving you the footage. I right. said, what, uh, people do films yeah, all, the all the time with your yeah. camera. Yeah, right. On your phone, how can you tell me just because this camera is more official looking? <laughs> you know, it, it made no sense. So yeah. I just, I literally like a Philly guy. I ran. I just. <laughs> First, I fought, then I ran. Right, I exactly. said, you're not going to take my footage. But did you well, have to have had, a permit? Yeah, this was permit and everything. Because oh, we were was. there, we were there for like eight hours. I'm not yeah. legit. <laughs> we were shooting not a long day. Oh. But the funniest thing is I was during the middle of one of the interviews right by the Globe there. I hear a woman walk by and go, oh, my God, I was on that show. Because we had like signs up. And I turn and she looks and she goes, that was the guy. And it turned out this is a woman I interviewed 20 years ago in Santa Monica. Oh, you know? wow. But, uh, yeah, look, fingers crossed. That's funny crossed, when people come up like that. Crazy. And, you know, and yeah. it would be funny. It would be fun to do it again if it would happen. If I, you know, if they, they, they said Foxworthy is going to host the studio stuff. He's a big name. He can sell the show in syndication yeah. or whatever. I'm like, Hey, I don't give a shit. As long as right. if I can be a part of the field, that's the fun stuff. Well, that was do. what you were so good at. Anyway, that was my the favorite. Wraparounds. Yeah. Is people are making money off your fuck yeah. ups. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, right. But the they weren't one. doing that when you were out on the field. Cause you really were, you were so clever and so quick on your feet. How did you develop it. those skills? I, I can't, mean, you know what? First of all, class clown, probably like yourself. Were you? Yeah. I mean, I was like. I think three years in a row in high school, I was class clown. One year, I think I won freshman year, but I didn't win sophomore year. And th- by the way, Jackie Joyce, I remember his name. Yeah. And I was pissed. So, Me too. So, yeah. so Right. So yeah. uh, junior year, I came out with the good material. I'm like, you know, I'm working <laughs> every class. I'm like, hey, remember when you're voting for the yearbook? <laughs> so I went three out of four years. And where the hell's Jackie Joyce right now? No one. Oh, knows. I had Paul DeBlazy. Right. And he came, to, he came to an audience one <laughs> Are you night. Serious? He's a teacher in the L.A. school district, even though I'm from Philly. Right. He ended up out here. And I saw him in the audience. I'm going, ah, oh, Paul DeBlazy, he won wittiest. Hysteria. Who's the wittiest yeah. now, pal? <laughs> Playing the improv, and you're teaching kids. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, of course, but we hold on to that stuff. Yeah, I can't. Um, it motivates. Yes, it does. It does. If it and wasn't for Jackie Joyce. Was that his name? Jackie Joyce. Jackie Joyce. Wherever Lord, he is. You've got to look him up. Are you out of your uh, mind? I'll look him up on How Facebook. How could you not look up Jackie Joyce? It, because I'm still better. I, I think Jackie, <laughs> I bet you Jackie Joyce is listening and watching this podcast on YouTube Jackie? and say, here I am. I want my title. I, th- <laughs> I want that. Th- I want that was stolen it, year. Was, was it only tenth grade? Was that? What I it? think yeah. I won freshman year and I lost like like I was defending my title. Maybe I got lax. Maybe I I rested on my laurels in biology <laughs> class and didn't crack enough jokes. So yeah, I didn't win and then I came back hard. Finished junior senior. <laughs> boom, I'm out. And, and what was your motivation for doing it? I mean, um, as, well, you know, I wanted to be a baseball player, but I think every kid wanted to be a baseball sure. player, right? Or but some I was sport. Some yeah. sport, right? But baseball I was really good at. But I was also Five foot tall, 114. You know, I just wasn't that great of a player. I was great glove. I had no no stick. I couldn't hit, but I I would be put in as a defensive replacement. And you were but a good bunter, I'm sure. I was a good I could <laughs> score up to bunt. <laughs> yeah. Um, although I did score up one time, and the pitcher threw at me and hit my finger against the bat, and it's crooked. Oh, that'll keep you from bunting. Yeah, I didn't like to bunt that yeah. much after that. <laughs> after, I, after Des Hogan threw a fastball. I was a little guy, too. I yeah. I was 5'1 in high school. Yeah, right. That's a motivating factor in itself. Yeah. But but the coach ended up I ended up getting cut from varsity the next year because he's like, well, you're a clown. You distract everyone on the bench. And I was <laughs> devastated. And then I'm like, wait, I'm a clown, huh? Hmm. Uh, so that's what I'll do. But I mean, I was. You a, owe him a call too. I owe Coach Woods a call. Um, <laughs> so thanks to Coach. I Woods. remember all these. You never names. know where Mark you're t- was. I know, right? You know what? I don't. Is that a Pennsylvania? Thing? It must be. 
I'm actually, sure. I don't know. I grew up with certain people, and they're freaking out how many names I memorized. Yeah, I just remembered those three names, which I haven't said. Des Hogan, who broke my finger, and Coach Mark Woods, who cut me. There right. you go. Oh, we have all these people. Well, yeah. first of all, they're on my resentment list. They're yeah. the reason I do <laughs> They're comedy. on your Nixon list. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Mr. Ruddy, Elwood Ruddy, absolutely. <laughs> this guy has... He has motivated me like no other person right. for take, kicking me off the All Star team. <laughs> Are you kidding right. me? Oh yeah, these people. That's who. That's who. That's what I was asking you. What was your motivation? Were, were there girls involved in the motivation, um, making them laugh? Well, you know, I mentioned that. Yeah, there was always that. But you know what? I Give was, me a name. I was the. F- <laughs> Give me a name. Karen Fitzgibbon. I love Karen Fitzgibbon. Fa- Karen Fitzgibbon. Karen Fitzgibbon. I guarantee you, you made her laugh, but and that know, made you happy. But it did. But you know what? Then she's like, "Oh my God, Frank, you're so funny." I'm going to go sleep with your friend. You know what I mean? It was one of those things. Oh. So my best friends would like benefit from me being the good table guy. You know, Bro, I'm like, we had the it. same life 300 right? miles apart. Yep. And I, I never, I, and I mentioned this, uh, I did a podcast, uh, the Laugh Factory one that I think you were on yeah, right after Georgia, me with yeah. Georgia. I, uh, I never had sex until I started stand up. I didn't have sex till I was 20. I oh. started stand up at 19. Oh, okay. Wasn't until t- <laughs> wasn't until 20. I, I, I feel worse for you now. Okay. <laughs> I, I ever did. I but thought. in high school, I, I was the funny friend, and I just I I never. Yeah, I, I, I like to say yeah. the girls would use the f word with me. Friend, I was yeah. always the friend. <laughs> exactly. Did you have this happen? This really pissed me off. Okay. Ladies out there, by the way, I just want you to know. Well, I'm sure I don't have too many that are like teenagers that are listening, mm-hmm. but be nice to the guys, okay? Yeah. Or else you're going to create a comedian who's going to talk <laughs> right. about you, all right? And there's plenty of us out there already. Yeah, and yeah, there's too many comedians. So um, the posse pee that girls go on mm-hmm. in high school especially, mm-hmm. they all have to go together at the same time sure, yeah, to right. go talk about guys. <laughs> exactly. Here's how bad it was. They let me in on the posse <laughs> pee. Like, I, would, in. I was invited. Ladies, let's go. Craig, come on. <laughs> yes. Come on, Craig. Because they knew that I was going to fix them up with the guys. Right. Oh, yeah. I've I had all there. the dudes around me because yep. they knew that I could attract the women yep. through my sense of humor. Absolutely. That's yeah. 100% so, true. Wow. We had the same damn life. And we were safe. We were, you know, we were safe. They didn't see us as like a threat. Oh, oh he's just a funny guy. Oh, is that the yeah. biggest insult And ever? I was a cute kid. I don't know what happened. I don't know. But <laughs> I had friends who were, uh, were good looking guys, I guess. Insult. I don't know. Did you go to the prom? I did with a friend, Mimi Patchett. Um, Mimi is a friend of mine. <laughs> she still is today? Now, yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, wow. I saw her maybe. Uh, well, she works with my uncle in Pittsburgh occasionally. Uh, she's a big lawyer, and my uncle's a retired doctor, and he comes in and, and helps her with trials and stuff. Wow, but your prom day became a, a prominent a big, lawyer. A big prominent lawyer in Pittsburgh. So we wow. went as friends, and we went wow. to the prom, and I overheard her talking about how much she likes Frank and how cute Frank is and you know where things are going. She's talking about a different Frank at school, <laughs> Frank Fox. I'll bring that name in too, who was a nice guy, but she really liked him. So went to the prom with me and I, and, oh, you know, it was after the prom where I found this out. Cause we all went back to her house for the after prom party. And then that night, this was the biggest mistake for a lot of us. Genesis was playing three river stadium. It was like Memorial day weekend is right around the prom is right. So Genesis was playing Three Which Rivers. Was a huge band. Huge band. They Phil were filling, Collins. Yeah, Phil Collins. Was, this is when they were at their right, peak. Invisible right. Touch was huge. And they they were playing Three River Stadium. So there's, you know, 50,000 people there. Oof. And we all went with, like, zero sleep. We're still running on adrenaline. Mm-hmm. We get there pre-gaming in the parking lot a little bit. We're underage. We're drinking some beers sure. or wine coolers or whatever. <laughs> and uh, we get in there, and Genesis comes out, and they open with a hit. And we're all like, yeah. And then... Like four songs in, they go back to some old like jazz fusion shit. And we all, you look over and we're all fall, we're all asleep at a Genesis show that we had been waiting all school year to go to. We sl- I slept through half of it. Oh. But I, that's, it was at the concert when we were tailgating and, and, and I heard her go, that's when I overheard her going, oh my God, Frank is so cute. <gasps> so I thought she was talking about last night at the prom. Sure. So I never kissed her prom night, never nothing. As I said, no sex. Years after, maybe four years after when all the girls were back from college and I'd already been doing stand up. We were at a friend's house one night, um, and I and I made out with her, and that was like a big like that was me finally getting my prom kiss four years later. Did yeah, wow. I, but, I I yeah I had <laughs> mine was Mary Fran Cardamom. See there you go, you got yeah. the name. It was the yeah well we're still tight today. Yeah yeah I, I stay know. at her house when I go to Philly. Hysterical. Yeah we ended up together <clears throat> when I became an adult. When you grow into yourself, yeah, and you be, get to be. You know, we understand uh, the world a little yeah. better, become good comedians, right. and you know, gift of the 
of the word. But also know how to close the deal, which I didn't know how to do in high school. Or yeah. at least be a little like, you know, take a chance or take a, you know, because I was always too like. Oh, Doesn't that stay with you forever, though? The, the lack of clothes. I don't know about you, but I have to have other people do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> We have people for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it started <laughs> off, I sent I sent somebody over as a messenger in fifth grade to ask Mary Fran Cardamone to go steady. Right. And she came back and sent a message. No. No. Go with Leslie Spencer. <laughs> I'm going to go with Lee Weiler because he has a mini bike. I love this. It was all about the money. <laughs> mini bikes and dirt bikes were huge. 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 If you had a dirt bike. And if you had one, oh, that was your it. Ferrari. Chick magnet. Yeah. That was, yes. That was like your red Corvette or whatever. Dirt I mean, bikes. You remember those? mini mini bikes? But we yeah. were too poor. I never had. one. No, I didn't have one either. Oh, really? I drove my I rode my sister's bike for a long time. Oh, um, that'll get you late. Oh yeah. Now I know why twenty. <laughs> and my mom. And it was a girl bike was with, a the girl, bar, with, with the bar yeah. that goes down, which oh. doesn't make sense, as we all know, because yeah. the it guys should have made no, no sense. Bar. It should be the exact exact, exact opposite. But it was baby blue. They, I mean, we I, got we got to look at the history of that. Why like, would Google they do that? that? Why they put the bar where a guy can chop off his balls? Right. But the girls, nothing. Oh, you know why, though? Why? Because the girls would wear skirts. Right. And that's so it gave room for the skirts. Oh, well, there you go. No, that's the reason for that. But that makes why sense. they don't just make all <laughs> bikes right. that way. Why do the guys have the bar? Why, that why we do we have the bar that you're going to bust your balls on? Every yeah. time. That's where the term bust your balls came right. from. So. <laughs> but your question about what got me back, yeah. going full back was being yeah. class clown, but also how I learned how to do street interviews and all that. I just studied Letterman for years. Like, Really? I watched Letter Letterman's field pieces, and he would do them Friday nights. He would always save a field piece where, you know, he would go to Just Bulbs or Just Shades, you know, New York, and right. he'd go into a place called Just Shades, go, what do you sell here? And the woman would be, Just Shades. What if I want to buy some bulbs? You, you'd probably have to find a place called Just Bulbs. <laughs> Cut to Just Bulbs, right? So I made a video like that when I first started stand-up at the Funny Bone in Pittsburgh. My friend Bob Del Pizzo, who is my best friend still, we went and shot a video at a mall in Pittsburgh, the Ross Park Mall, with a video camera, the big camcorder, and I yeah. tried to do like a Letterman-esque piece, cut it together on two VCRs, and when wow. you edit back then, you had the rainbow stripe, you know, they just, you couldn't sure. get it sharp. Showed it on the monitors at the Funny Bone, and it got big laughs, so I went out and did a couple more, but I studied Letterman. I mean, even my dad used to record Letterman for me on audio cassette and I'd come home from school and listen to it. Right. And then mm. we got a VCR and I would watch it. So I just, I learned from him how to, you know, and I'd watch all the comics on there, you know, Seinfeld and Richard Lewis. And I, I learned how to, you know, come up with material and maybe write a joke and the field stuff though. I totally credit Letterman because it was just, mm. you know, just, you know, the mic technique, like I had never, you know, inter I had done stand up for a long time, but I had never gone back and forth and I had a stick mic and had to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why Warner Brothers was like, wow, this guy's been doing this a long time. And I really hadn't done a lot of interviews, but I just, I was just, I've always You're been almost able emulating a master. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And it's right. just, I've always, I've always, I mean, I think I learned how to play basketball and I never played tennis. And the first time I played tennis, I was pretty good because I watched McEnroe. And I don't know. I just, just by studying people, I, I sat down and played drums a little bit once because I'd watched so many like uh, concerts on HBO and MTV. So I don't know. But the, the thing I studied the most was stand up and Letterman doing his field stuff. So when it came chance to do that, I think that's why I was confident and I kind of knew how to bring a, you know, a callback and a joke back in the middle of an interview. Let, let someone else shine, you know, um, you know, Dean Martin playing, I, I would play Dean Martin to their Jerry Lewis. I knew sure. the interview was about these people who were nervous. You know, we're in, we're in the Minnesota state fair in the middle of summer. These people are coming to the state fair, have no idea a national television show is going to be there, but they want to be on TV and they're nervous and I'm there to make them comfortable, you know? Sure. And, and they said, oh, you're going to get, people are going to come swing at you. And if you're making them look silly on TV, I said, I don't, I think because I, of my size and my stature and the regular guy thing, I don't think anyone was ever an intimid ever and they, intimidated. They never did take a no, swing at you. Ever. Never. And Warner Brothers also thought, and the producers went, you know what? We're never going to be able to do a season two because people are going to see the show and go, oh, this guy like makes people look silly or stupid. And we went out to shoot season two, and it was a million percent yeah, opposite. They're, they're lining up People like a diving were board. People lining yeah, up yeah, because yeah. it basically gets back to, so, you know, we're at Navy Pier in Chicago. People see the signs for Street Smarts running up to sign up to get, you know, to at least that we had a little audition process where they wanted to see personality and if they'd miss five out of the ten sample questions. But it, it boiled down to people wanted to be on TV. That's it. They do. I, so yeah. People are compelled to be on TV. What I was more or less asking, though, is <laughs> what drove you? Oh, what drove me? Like, what's the motivation? And, and like, I don't want to lead you down to, is it girls? No, I mean, no, is it I, the attention I, of girls? I, is it I just parents? Think, I is think it, it was anybody that would laugh. I mean, I think a lot of us, it's probably the similar answer, or maybe not. I don't know. But 
But I remember I grew up in a there's a big Italian film. My dad's Italian, my mom's German, but we grew up in I we were with my dad's family more in Pittsburgh. What part of Pittsburgh? Uh, North Hills of Pittsburgh, a suburb. I went to North Allegheny. But my dad was from the north side, like by the state penitentiary sure. and kind of the rough area. And we lived there for six months when we moved back from California. I was born in Pittsburgh, came to LA. My dad was a writer and a DJ and an actor in the mid seventies. I never knew that. I know. Worked with Wolfman Jack on the Midnight Special, wow. helped write jokes for him and Wrote commercials on Kiss, uh, KPOL and K-Love, these couple stations, KFI or whatever. Did he have a stage name? Well, you, you, the, his old, what he was, when he started radio in the 60s, uh, Sam Nicotero wasn't a good radio name. So right. he was always told it should be a name people can spell. So it's supposed to be a simple name. That's right. So he went by Tony Scott. I knew it. Was his big name. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. There's no way that Nick so and he was, oh, No, it didn't fly. Now these, now in right. comedy and stuff, they, they are absolutely you cannot pronounce their names. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. still don't know Anthony Jeselnik. Yeah. Is <laughs> just, I mean, there's Who's so many Pittsburgh, of them. Apparently, I never met him. Way he was way after. But my there's time. so many I agree. that just they stick with their name. Yeah, I've actually talked to people because I'm like old school. I go, right. hey, you might want to change that name. Oh no, there's yeah. not even there's not even a shot that they're going. I, someone just opened for me at uh, yeah. the show. I think you came to uh, Christine Fe Fecati. Oh yeah, no. Fecati. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going. No, yeah, but yeah. It, no, yeah, that's that's got to go. Yeah, Flynn. Try F yeah. Flynn would be good. Yeah, but something. We're, we're naming this yeah. this comic now. <laughs> Call her up. But I mean, yeah, before it's too late. I mean, it's it doesn't make any sense. So that's what they did back in the '60s and yeah. '70s. Yeah, is they took your name, especially if it was ethnic, if yeah. it was a Jewish or <laughs> yeah. Italian. Oh, no, no, exactly. No, they because you're trying to appeal to Middle America. Remember, I don't. Know, did you go to college? I went a semester to Duquesne University, Duquesne and then I quit. Pittsburgh, yeah. Started stand up, so yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't renew. My my parents were like, "Did you go? Did you, <laughs> did you apply for fall semester?" I went, "I'm gonna take a semester <laughs> off." And that did, they were like, "Well," and then I got a job at National Record Mart selling records. And then I used to call the funny bone and say, "Hey, I want to be a comedian." And and you know they'd be like, "Okay, well you got an and I'd hang up. I'd get Jeff network. Schneider. Is that Jeff Schneider was the owner, and the one Schneider of them, brothers, yeah, the yeah. Schneider brother. <laughs> There's that's another hour. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but w one of the guys kept my number and said, "Hey, man." I know you call here all the time wanting to be a comic. We have a White Mountain Cooler comedy competition. It was a national like competition. It's open. When Come down this? and sign up. This was May of 88, May 4th, 88. And I was that's, 19. That's your virginity. <laughs> you remember the date. Yeah. And I went down the, I went down a week before and I was nervous. I walked in and the manager saw me. He's like, how old are you? 14? I looked very young. Yeah. 19. He goes, well, okay, but it's an open competition. You know, you can't drink. I'm like, I, I, I was so overwhelmed. And I said, he goes, do you need a week? He goes, why don't you, you do you have jokes or you, you know what you're doing? I said, no, but I took a week. I mean, I was ready that night, but I went back and I had my set and it was like Michael Jackson trying to buy the elephant man bones. He was trying to buy the elephant man's bones jokes and, you know, stuff about school. <laughs> so I put, so I rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. And it was like three or four minute spot. And I went up first night ever killed thought this is going to be easy. Should have, should have, I did, but it was a packed house and it was this competition and I, I did really, really well. I think because people were like, this kid looks like he's 10 years old. Sure. So I went up and did really well and I'm like, oh, this is going to be simple. And then the second time I did stand up, horrible, you know, just always the case. Yeah. Always. It's either one of the two. Every right? single time. But I thought, yeah, I thought it was going to be simple. In baseball, remember they used to call it the sophomore jinx. Sophomore slump. Yeah. Yes. Sophomore, yeah, sure. Right. I remember, I can remember growing up every damn We'd have a nice rookie for right. the Phillies, and then the <laughs> next year they tanked. I'm going, it's the sophomore there jinx. There it is. The same thing goes, your second show yeah. sucks. Terrible. now you're thinking about it too Oh, much. yeah. And I thought I, the first one went so well. I'm like, oh, I got this. Yeah, you know what part of it is? I mean, thinking out loud, because you really – you throw caution to the wind your first time. It's like it's, it's almost like you're saying, oh, I'm going to fail. I'm brand new. Right. This is not going to go right. well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So the expectations are so low. They're right. like lower than, the, you know, worm jizz. And <laughs> So, but then, it, whoa, I killed. Now yeah. the bar is set yeah. and you're trying to get there. Now you're trying right. too hard. You're not memorizing your stuff. You're not being in the moment. And then now it's a big failure. Oh, yeah. And then you, then you have to gradually then the work come back. Starts. Yeah, then you got to start working. Gets, yeah. yeah, now it's when, then when the work And it was in. the late 80s, so, you, you know, every pizza place and bar was doing shows. Oh, so, yeah. so I was making like, you know, 60 bucks at a record store or I could do one or two or three nights at local bars where my name would get passed around to their comics and you're getting 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And all of a sudden I'm making like a hundred bucks and I'm like, well, let's do the math here. Taxed money at a record store. 
or doing stand up and learning how to. I mean, are you kidding? It was right. a no brainer. Hanging out with these famous comics coming through town. Unbelievable. Did we ever work together back no, then? No, never. No, we never no. did. No. Not, no, I didn't meet you till Los Angeles. So, no, we never did. Wow, that is so strange. But, because I did that funny bone for yeah, years. It was the I one did. on Sawmill Run Boulevard and then Station Square. That's right. Uh, what, I know. I remember your name on the schedule, but no, we never, never, oh, that's never worked so together. That's strange because uh, yeah, they always. You know, all of the clubs, I would go into town and they have a, a local that yeah, opens sure. up the show and I get to know the local a little bit. Uh, John Knight is from there, very John funny Knight. guy. Uh, yeah, John Knight, Billy Elmer. I mean, there was a lot of great guys. Jimmy Cran, guys I started, Mark Eddy, where I met Mark. Oh, um, uh, Mario Joyner. Mario Joyner, yeah. I met him when he was a track star oh in high God. school. Really? That's how far back we go. Yeah. Wow. And, yes. And and now he opens for Seinfeld. For Seinfeld the road, all the time. All yeah. the time, yes. But he was a... And I'll never forget, I was doing a, a funny bone, and we're in the condo, the comedy yeah, oh condo. Yeah. Those are famous, by the way. <laughs> when we were I don't growing think you can Google business. those either. I don't know if that term would be out there. Comedy <laughs> the, condo? Do you think there's a Wikipedia entry? Yeah, on that? I'll bet you. I'll bet you. There's a. I'll bet uh, there's a book about it. Yeah, there should the, be. Call, there should be called you the could comedy pack condo. Many, many books for those. How many people from back then do you? remember and now they're dead because uh, of, because of that lifestyle I, 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 it was well, such a bad lifestyle well yeah i was gonna say a couple i mean but one that's dead not because of the lifestyle but i remember i got to work with bill hicks like you know twice yeah me too in yeah. pittsburgh and i got to open for him and he walked in uh because station square the funny bone at station square was like a mall but it was like restaurants and fancy shops and he walked in he goes first i go hey bill i'm frank Nick. he goes where's the video arcade in this mall i go we don't have an arcade and he just went because he was just trying to get clean right yeah. Um, he, he had, you know, there were these legendary stories of his drinking and drug use. And at the time, I was 20, and he was 27, but, mm -hmm. you know, he looked older. And by the way, 27 to me at 19 was like yeah, 100, was, you know. It's like a dad. <clears throat> but then uh, I said, well, you know what? I said, I, I, if you want video games, I said, I have a, a Nintendo or a Sega Genesis, whatever the, the game unit of the day was. I'll bring it up to the condo for you. And he goes, are you kidding me? Because he didn't want to go out after shows. All he right. wanted to do was play video games. And get right back to... Right, right back to the condo, a, play right, video no games, write jokes. yeah. So I brought it down and I you know, would play video games with him, left it there for the whole week. And then he came back to town and said, he's got to open for me, right? And... Um, so you and your Sega my, that, system <laughs> yeah. got you another gig. Right, with Bill Hicks. You never know. It's, you never know. In, in New York, if you had a car, you'd have a gig. Oh, that, yeah, that's you, true. The car person would meet at the improv on 45th and 9th <laughs> or wherever it was. Right. And then they would drive you into the suburbs right. of like New Jersey or whatever. So the car Broader person one -nighters always right. got, yeah. John Schuler always had a gig. It didn't matter how bad the act was, how good it was. If you have a car, you have a gig. That's how, <laughs> that's how it worked back then. But drugs yeah. were such a part of the 80s comedy scene. I'll tell you what, and, and I was so naive, right? I had been around weed. My dad, like I said, was a DJ. He smoked weed. I knew what weed was. And I was doing a one-nighter in Fairmont, West Virginia. It was the Fairmount Coal Festival. Or was this a one-nighter in, in Morgantown? The Fairmount Coal Festival? Yeah. You were doing comedy? We were doing outdoor comedy. We've me, done comedy for every outside situation. Outside at two in the afternoon. For a coal festival. Right, with a band at the other end of the street. Talk about a dark crowd. <laughs> the the they, worst. They're like soot, and they've got <laughs> the canaries. And, and if, they, if they laugh, it's Iron just, lung. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're coughing instead of laughing. You're like, hey, I killed. A guy hooked up a lung. I was, a, I was, I was on fire in Fairmount. So I go, we go to get paid. This wasn't the, the coal festival because this was an indoor gig. It was a bar. But I think it was in Fairmont. So we, we walked in, and it was me and this guy, uh, comic in Pittsburgh, Chris Yardy. And we walk in, and the guy goes, uh, all right, I got to pay you guys. And I was supposed to get 100 bucks. And he goes, do you want Coke? And I said, I said, no, no, no. I said, I, and I was 19, I was 20. I'm like, no, I had like three Cokes at the bar because I, I, I didn't drink. And, you know, uh -huh. I just had some sodas. I'm like, oh, yeah, I had three Cokes. And I'm like, he's like, Coke. And I went, what? Uh -huh. And Chris, the comedian, goes, he wants to know if you want your pay in cocaine that's, or cash. And right. I went, cash, cash, please, cash, cash, cash. <laughs> they used to go white or green. You See, get paid I, in white or green. White or green. I never heard that. Wow. You are lying. I never heard white or green. Until just this and moment. Just until this moment. Oh, I got paid constantly. Yeah. In, in, I'd pick one of the two. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of them was in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Monroeville. <laughs> yeah. At okay. the Holiday House. The Holiday House. House. Yeah, I've the heard The Holiday stories. House. This guy walked in. He claimed. Do you remember this guy? He claimed that he was with Tommy James and the Shondells. If, was he you know, the owner or manager? Because I know like some stories. One of the two. It was definitely a mob run place. Yes, it was a total yeah. mob. The guy claimed. I was I was in the Monroeville Mall finding Tommy James and the Shondells albums because you didn't have Google then <laughs> yeah. to see if this guy was legit. I'm going, and you know, you see pictures with people yeah. with beards and stuff from the 70s. Right. You can't really see what they would look like in the 80s with right. like a mullet. 
you know, and clean shave. And I'm going, is that the guy right there? Because he claimed he was the bass player. Right. Well, he walks in my hotel room. He decided for me it was going to be in white, but it was it was oh. free bass. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so I like, free based for oh my pay. My God. At the, oh, my so God. He comes in there with a blowtorch. I'm not kidding you. Oh. And one of my fraternity brothers was in there. He fires this up with uh, chemicals and a mirror. And he's got this whole thing going. And uh, so we're smoking uh, <laughs> we're, we're smoking our, our my pay. Oh, my God. My, my friend Glenn got half my pay up his nose <laughs> or in his mouth oh, yeah. and his lungs. And uh, yes, uh, so that's how it went back then. Oh, I didn't Erie, know white or green. Erie was the same sure, thing. Erie they, PA, yeah. Erie PA they, they, that's how they pay, white or green. There were certain like mob elements back then in the in the comedy business. Yeah, they were like they'd have a gun on them, and it was just like a whole other thing. It was a lot of backroom shit oh, yeah. going on, which is weird because it's supposed to be light and comedy. <laughs> oh no, but it is so dark. And well, there Leno, are so many people that are dead. Well, Leno was at the at uh, Flappers a couple weeks ago. He yeah. was on a show. Uh, he went up before me, and of course, I did the line after. Oh, nice to see the young kids coming opening. You know, going before. <laughs> but he told some mob stories on stage, and then he when he, he did? when he heard when I was from Pittsburgh, he goes, "I started at the strip joints on Liberty Avenue," and it's like you know Jay has this photographic memory. I'm like Liberty Avenue, and there were tons of strip joints, and and Billy Elmer, who was a comedian. That I, I was like a mentor to me. He started there too. And Jake, oh, yeah, yeah, Billy. I remember Billy. Oh, Billy's yeah, dead. Billy. I'm because Billy, he yeah. passed away. I'm like, no, no, Billy's alive. He's fine. He had a heart attack. He's good. But um, I've heard all about these mob. It was a lot of mob run places. And, yeah. and if you played the strip joints, I mean, come on. Of course, those were mob joints. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where we were, how we got on to There, you get, there you get paid uh, in oil. <laughs> there was actually, uh, we. Uh, did you ever work? I booked it, uh, the Comedy Cafe in Washington, D.C. Well, it's funny. I saw your post about it. Oh, you did? I, I saw your post because the same thing happened to me. I was a middle there, and Dave Chappelle was the opener. Oh, right. You did yeah, mention I think that. I mentioned Ch Chappelle that. opened for me. Chappelle, he was 14 there. He, when I did it, I was probably 19 or 20, so he was probably like 18 or something. He was, I think he was a year younger than me. Yeah. And I just remember those, uh, there were those steps. It was like a bar, comedy club, strip joint. Yep. And if I remember, there was a back staircase where you could- The comedy put, club was on top. On top. Okay, yeah. Right. So the, but the women had to go through past you because it was like a, it, it was like shaped like a train. Okay, yeah. You remember yeah, that? I, was, I only did it one time. There I wasn't much remember. in front of you. It was yeah. there all to the sides. And I actually started him with big, big acts there. I convinced yeah. him. He paid $100 a weekend, Ugh. find your own room, right. turned it into Seinfeld, Leno, Within a couple of years, oh, I, had wow. him, I had booked all those comics there. No shit. And uh, I'll never forget, I used to, I, and I, that was the way I got to open for like Leno. Yeah. Because I booked them. Yeah, right. I was like, I'm, putting them, I'm putting them on that show. Absolutely. He was always filled with advice. I remember him turning me going, hey, you know that, uh, you know what you're doing with the, uh, the, the lifeguard with the come on the nose? Yeah, you might be getting a laugh, but uh, you're, there's five people that are thinking it's, uh, it's offensive. So you might want to take it. So that was a great letter. I, I, I never forget him giving me all that advice. And you're, you're such a cocky kid. I was such a cocky sure. kid. Sure. Oh, shut up, old man. Yeah, right. You know, you, you don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, I said, oh, you're just jealous because I'm killing and all that. <laughs> That's how I was, right? And I go, I killed. They had yeah. to follow me. Oh, yeah. And now I've been people, and I hate it. Following those assholes that are doing that with me. Yeah. Shut up, you old man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm getting my just. But anyway, they, it was a strip joint. Yeah. And the girls would pass by during your set and they would always carry a bottle of Windex because Dan Harris, the crazy owner, would have them clean up <laughs> the mirror that they had their ass prints right. on. He'd make them clean up so they would go, dude, you know. Yeah. You know, oh, play that funky music, right. white boy. And then, and that's the clothes. And then. <laughs> <laughs> they would wipe, wipe all the butt. Prints. Sponsored by Windex, exactly. Yeah. And everybody had to have that was their stand. They had a rag and Windex, and they would do, they would go buy us. And, but I mean, there were so many gigs but, then. But, but wait, that, the, yeah. the funny story when I got paid, I think yeah. I got paid two hundred bucks to middle or three hundred. That's pretty good. Back I, then. I think it was two or three hundred. And I remember this is so funny. You can I was, thank me by the way for getting you that right, raise. I will. All right. I always thank Tom Dreesen when I get paid for sets in L.A. because of the strike they did. Oh in yeah. Seventies. So I'm walking out and I'm loading my car up. I left the club. I got my cash in my pocket, maybe three or four hundred bucks. And I think it was on K Street or near. K? It was Sixteenth and K. And K. Yeah. And the hotel. They put us up in a hotel, and of course. I had my porno VCR with me and I remember <laughs> taking my bag and opening the trunk to my car and I'm putting the bag and I'm putting my, D my VCR in the trunk and a, a hooker comes out to me because there were hookers all up and down, right? And she's yeah. like, hey, do you want to have a good time? Like 200 bucks. And I'm like, well, I have three or four in my pocket, you know, and I'm like, no, I got to go. And I slammed the trunk and I jumped in, but they were everywhere. I mean, it was kind of a seedy area. Maybe the hotel was true. Wasn't. Yes. But I'll never. I, <laughs> I got just, rolled. 
Did you really? Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, but I just remember that I talked about the VCR earlier, and I remember I was loading my suitcase and the VCR and I had a pocket full of cash and got propositioned by a hooker, and I'm like, uh, I haven't. Uh, no, go. Just go. Go. <laughs> Drive back to Pittsburgh with your money and go. You did good. But... Um, Oh, so you commuted from Pittsburgh to DC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was middling and I got that's a room. Good. That's yeah, that's it's that's like a close four or five enough. hour drive. And I had never yeah. been to DC since I was a kid. And I remember, I, I walked around a lot during the day and, and really enjoyed it. But we we drove then. I, I for I had, miles and miles. My first for fifty bucks sometimes. First car was an eighty nine Nissan Sentra. In three years, I put one hundred twelve thousand miles. Highfalutin. Highfalutin by this. Yeah. Paid full sticker because I didn't know better. Vinyl seats. Oh my God. No air conditioning. No stereo. Which I had a friend of mine down you the street. You think I'm feeling sorry for you no. when I'm driving a Sunbird, a Pontiac Sunbird? <laughs> no, I at least had used. a new car. Yeah, it was new. Oh, it, it man, was seven thousand me. Based was, on middle money? <laughs> <laughs> it was $7,087. And my payment was, I want to say, two oh seven. So I had a monthly nut of two oh seven, and that was it. Maybe ins- I probably had insurance. I guess I had to. But uh, it was a stick shift. And, and if it was raining, I remember me and... Shang Forbes was a, a comedian for Pet. Sure. We drove to a one-nighter, and I got, I got this new car, and it was pouring rain. It was the middle of the summer, so it was hot and humid, but the rain was torrential downpour, so we had to roll the windows up, and he goes, put the air on. I go, I don't have air conditioning. So it was just like a sweat box <laughs> for driving, stick shift. I think I had the stereo installed by then by my friend Alan Walsh, but I'm just driving, and I'm like, I made him... I, I didn't get air air conditioning. I think now is standard, right? I don't think you can buy a car without no. AC. And by the way, there aren't many sticks left either. No, I know. I, well, you know what I say about this generation? Yeah. If you don't want anyone under thirty five to steal your car, just have a stick buy shift. A manual. That's like low jack. Yeah, it is way, <laughs> way better. <laughs> they have no shot if they would. Well, they it. would look in and go, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but <laughs> that was my first car. Uh, Bill, H- I went. Oh, the final Bill Hicks thing was. The reason Bill Hicks liked me, because I brought in the Sega Genesis, but the first night uh, when I emceed for him, I used to close with this joke, and I go, ah, I was playing Trivial Pursuit, and I got this question, what does, uh, what does diphthalic, uh, um, what does a man suffering from diphthalic tirada have? And the audience would yell stuff out. If no one knew, and I, the answer was two penises. This was a legit Trivial Pursuit question. This is my big closer. And I go, suffering sounds like a blessing to me. They should put one of these guys on a double mint gum commercial. <laughs> and then I go, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Hicks. So Bill Hicks grabs my hand as he, I bring him on stage, and the crowd's going nuts. And he goes, not only is that a dick joke, that's a double dick joke. <laughs> he's like, you're doing that every night before me. It's genius. So when I came back to open from the following time, he's like, double dick joke, guys. Like, because you got to do it before me. Not a dick joke. Double dick joke. He thought it was the funniest thing, and that's how he remembered me. Oh, but that's great. You're um, the double dick joke. But anyway, back to the condos. Yes, the, the lifestyle. I mean, I, I mean, I started as an 18 year old in the late 80s, and where drugs were 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 everywhere, and heard the stories, and didn't know the white or green line. But yeah, I mean, a lot of guys that I worked with, yeah, passed away, and you know, sadly, it still happens. It's terrible. Yeah, it happened recently. I just uh, two or three over the Labor Day weekend. There was some. Guys and well, girls. Well, three died in uh, Kate's. Uh, yeah, I don't know her. I know the name, but I know oh, she's okay, yeah. though, right? Yeah, I just texted her like a week before. Yeah, someone posted that she's going to be okay. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's that, you know, and you, you learn that it's that high you get when you drink and, you know, from when, I, when you're on stage and you get off stage and you can keep the party going, you know? Yeah, I had to uh, end up stopping. Yeah. And uh, no, years ago. Yeah, and you've been clean yeah, for a yeah, long time. Yeah, and I, I just, you know, now... But the bummer about it is it's kind of a double-edged sword is that the staff who you get to know, mm-hmm. uh, they want to party with you. This is yeah. like their escape. I mean, yeah. they spend their tip money on, <laughs> on the bar across the street. That is so true. And you end up looking like, you know, oh, he's a snob or right. whatever it is. But they have no idea. No, I'm just trying to take care of myself yeah. <laughs> that I end up not like somebody you just partied with that died the week before. Yeah, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people in our generation did die. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, and even still, they are, and because well, it just can't stop. You know, it's it's it, some it's a pattern. It's an addiction. Yeah, it's all part of it too. It's I was asking you earlier. It is about you know the attention that you get, the the love that you get. Now I'll get a little deeper. Did you have love growing up in your house? Do you yeah. Th- oh, you, very much so. You felt loved. Oh yeah, and that and you, that you, you're pissing me off. You're, right. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> well, well. you, you bought a new fucking car. <laughs> Uh, you you've got, hey, you got way, loving parents, a successful on, dad in but, show no, no, business. No, 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 There's no, got to no, be something no. bad here. I, well, my parents decent were, amount of money, no, no, the no, good no. side of Allegheny. No, no. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, it was the I North was, Hill. I spent six months suffering Lower on the wrong side of class. Allegheny. Then we went to <laughs> then we went to the better part I of did Allegheny. Say that. And I, I did and say I've that. been to North Hills, by the way. It's, it's, very it's nice. ritzy. It's very nice. It's ritzy. So don't give me we this were shit, in the Nicotero. Lower, I was the lower middle class. It's not lower middle class. And your Wranglers. parents stayed together. No, they didn't. No, see, that's where I was going. Oh, okay. So they started they started to have trouble. Well, there were there was always some they fights had to. and arguments. Dad's in show business. Right, exactly. And he was a radio guy. But in in tenth grade, my my parents uh, did finally separate and get a divorce. But that's a whole other story. My mom still we still lived in the house, but my dad lived in the basement. It was just <laughs> oh, they were separated, living in the same living house. in the same house for financial reasons, and right, yeah, there was just not enough money. So it was like I'd have friends over and they'd hear noise in the basement. And go, holy shit, what was that? I'm like, oh, it's just my dad. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, I was like, but um. You're, yeah, back then and I they failed had miserably. Ba- well, they, they still do. Pittsburgh has basements. Refurnished base. Yeah, we kind of refinished it. I mean, with the wood with paneling, the paneling, wood paneling, and like and, a Jack Ham poster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad was all movie posters. It was a big Serpico poster, James okay. Bond posters. <laughs> he had a lot of movie posters, but yeah. Um, so no, I mean, they went through a divorce in tenth grade, and I did miserable in school. I'd always been a good student, and then tenth grade. Just, just horrible. So it affected I, I wasn't, you. Yeah, it affected me. I couldn't. St- I wasn't. But both studying. loved you always. Yes, never and both an issue supportive. With the parents. And, and here's another thing: is supported you in comedy. Yeah. Well, here's why: because you know, God, what? neither one you. of I'm them. Starting to hate you. <laughs> neither one of them went to college. My mom, my dad met. My dad was a DJ in Rockford, Illinois. Um, twenty two years old, twenty three years old. Good my market. mom, yeah, right, and my, outside of Chicago, and my mom mm-hmm. was a waitress at a you know a diner, and they met. Mm-hmm. And they got, you know, they got married. Uh, then my dad got a promotion to West Virginia, which was closer to Pittsburgh. So they moved further back. And then he got Pittsburgh Market, which was his goal all along where he grew up. He worked as a DJ in Pittsburgh? Oh, yeah, for years. And when, even when he... What the, station? The last show, he, well, he was on so many. He was on... Uh, uh, in the seventies. It was a, it was in Beaver Falls. It was a rock station in Beaver Falls, which is where Joe Namath, Joe Namath is from. Yeah. And uh, Frank Namath, his brother, helped me... Teach me, taught me how to swim at the YM, the, the YMCA. Okay. That's just a story about the name is. But my dad was uh, the program director and, you know, the, the afternoon drive time jock or whatever. And he was huge. And uh, in the Pittsburgh market. Then we moved to L.A. in the 70s because he had a book he wrote, which uh, I'm going to do a documentary on. So we were talking about that off camera. We'll talk about that. But um, then he kind of gave up. His dad died in 79. He got ripped off by like so many people in LA. Someone stole the money he had raised for a movie and disappeared. Uh, Sam Peckinpah kind of ripped off an idea. I mean, there's a lot of, he just got fed up. Yeah. Moved back to Pittsburgh. His dad had died. And, um, you know, then, which I'm, I, I, you know, in retrospect, I'm glad, you know, because when we lived in LA, there was a, a Michael, Dar- Mike Darnell, who's now a big wig at um, Warner Brothers, and he created all, he basically is one of the creators of like reality TV. His mom was a casting director, and Michael was in uh, a bunch of commercials, KFC and all these commercials. And then he was Kojak's nephew. He had like this acting career. Mm. And his mom begged my parents to put me in commercials in the 70s because I was like this really cute kid with like the bleach blonde hair from the sun in California. And my dad said, no, he didn't want it. And my mom was like, why? You know, and he didn't want me to do it, maybe to fall into the L.A. trap. Or I I could have been the next dad. I'm rich. Um, Who also, (laughs) I think, died of drugs. But anyway, um, so we moved back to Pittsburgh. But they were very, because my dad was in the arts. All right. And my mom who I was trying to make laugh more than anybody because there were some sad times and, you know, you there wanted to make you your go. mom laugh. Now we're into motivation. Now yes. I'm lying down on the couch. We're trying to stay. So, <laughs> okay. So, but, so but, telling so, yes. me about yeah. your mother. <laughs> was, uh, and your my mother, the, you tried to turn that smile again, upside down. Exactly. And I guarantee you frown she's, upside down. she's listening to this for sure. This is your motivation. This is your motivation. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, and then I saw I could make my mom laugh and my sister yeah. and I would do, you know, wild pranks on my sister and who's four years older than me, Gina, who's in Pittsburgh still and and that was a motivating factor and then what i was getting to with the the large italian family so you go to a family gathering on sundays or every holiday and it's my dad had three brothers and they were the loudest you know quoting movie lines and screaming Mm -hmm. music references and so here am i the youngest male because i also have three male cousins older than me so there's like eight italian guys in a room maybe even 10 and i'm the youngest male so how am I going to get, you know, I'm watching them all get their moment of, mm. you know. How are you going to do it? How am I going to do there it? There you go. There's Gotta enough, make well, some you're jokes. checking off a lot of classic yeah. classic reasons for yeah. people being a stand-up. I know. And you just I, don't have one. No, I have <laughs> several. And I said, I want to I want to be the guy to control the room. Like each uncle would yeah. have their time and the un- the great uncles and the great. So I think I then, I, I don't know if I ever like wrote jokes or came prepared, but I, I saw, okay, I need to be able 
to be that guy that controls the room. And I remember my uncle, this is before I started stand up, saying something to my mom once. Well, when Frankie comes in the room, he's got to control the goddamn room. He's so loud and he wants everyone's attention. And this is, I only heard this years after I'd done stand up. And I'm like, really? I was, I was, I was doing that. I, I was controlling a room when I was like 14. I didn't realize that, you know. But so I think that was one of the motiv motivating factors. And, you know, just doing it with my friends, you know, and, and at school and making them laugh and making girls laugh too, you know. It sure. really does give, it does give you such It gives you confidence, it, yeah. Fulfillment. I, yeah. I just, I think that, um, does your wife laugh at you? I, my girlfriend, yes, girlfriend. all the time. Yeah, I, I was married. But my girlfriend, yeah. I mean, we, she, and she's very funny. And yeah. she's is from she Maryland. Comic? No, she's not. She's a, a dancer that. and a yoga instructor. Have you ever and, been with a comic, by the way? Um, not dating. There was slept with. Yeah, a couple. You a couple. Uh, uh, oh, off one. the air, I'm gonna get one. No, <laughs> one. And it was the night the war broke. It was in Columbus, Ohio. I've, again, I have a vivid memory at the condo for the Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio. This is the only name he won't give us. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might. Say, I'll say it. I mean, I don't know, but but um, he'll give us Jack Joyce or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jack and Joyce. But um, the war broke out, right? Yeah. And I was. It was the, the Iraq Desert war. Storm, Iraq yeah, War, and right. I'm 21. And my mom immediately was like, I'm not letting them take you. You're my sort. You know, you, we, we live together. And, you know, so she was like freaking out that I was going to get drafted. Mm. And this girl comic I was working with was around my age. And, uh, yeah, that night she's like, you know, we, we slept together because we were like, the war broke out. You know, we were like making a joke about it. Like, the oh. war's broke out. This could be the last time we're oh, going to see this, each other. I thought you were trying to get a deferment. No. <laughs> if, you, if, if you actually, if you're sleeping with someone, you get no, a deferment. No, 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 no. I didn't know where that one was we going. We were just, we were having drinks and acting like the world is ending. And, so, you know. All so right, yeah. Together. So I might as well get one in here. Right. And then she left the net because it was the, I think that was the Sunday show. And, you know, she left Monday morning. And I remember she left a note. She's like, see you next time a war's breaking out or something. Wow. Like, left a note. Never, never slept with her again. Never slept. But a, <laughs> but a friend of mine in Pittsburgh did on another gig. So. Oh my God! That's why maybe I shouldn't. Say I anything, hear but, about this all the time. But no, I never. That, that's I never I, dated. I missed a comic. out on this. I I only yeah I slept with one. Yeah. who had amyl nitrate. <laughs> that was sniffing? in Pennsylvania, yeah. also by the way. <laughs> all my bad drug right, exactly. drug stories are yeah. She had amyl and she so she forced me to do that instead of just having natural sex and having a good time. You just sniff it, right? It's like no, a, no. You, oh, you, you they inhale this oh, thing and okay. she had these inhalers and. You know, whatever. I mean, that's that was her jam. She had to have that amyl <laughs> nitrate. Couldn't just you know, have sex with right. just me. Had to be. But uh, yes, I was the only one uh, I was ever with. And yeah. she's probably either dead or long out of the yeah, business yeah, yeah. now. I don't have like this list of. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I, I've never I never heard of her sticking around with it or anything. I don't oh, think she's still. Out oh, there. she's not still doing. I don't think she's. I would have to look. But I mean, I've never you heard of me. her in 20 years. Yes. You have to tell me later. So tell me about the documentary that you are. Oh well, on now. The, the 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 one I just uh, alluded to about my dad or my dad's book or whatever when he was out here or you were talking about a documentary that you oh the that the music one yeah or well there's two the music one's done I mean I did this like five or six oh years that ago. one yes yeah the one I want to do is based on my dad my dad wrote a book and that's one of the reasons we we came out in the seventies to L A was he was trying to get a movie deal or a book deal and it's about a famous murder trial in Pittsburgh. And uh, I want to use the book as like a blueprint. I, there's a few of the people, the key players still involved. And um, well, that's, you know, well, you know what took place a great documentary crime. series. Yeah. True crime. Yeah. Right. That's All big. That. Now. That's huge. That's what that's I mean. That's I'm why addicted to I it. know everyone is. And well, that's why I did Pennsylvania, the keepers. Oh, I don't know about that one. What? I don't. I don't. What? I don't listen to that many true crime podcasts. No, I'm it's not a podcast. It was a television series. The Keepers. What? Oh my! You've Where am I seeing this? Where? Me. What streaming service? It's in Pennsylvania. I'm talking about major Netflix or whatever. I mean, the this Keepers. Is like two, three years ago, okay. but still, it is a. It's one of the t you know, like making a murderer. Yeah. Murder at Middle Beach. Right. This one. This one's. Yeah. It's a. It's. It's. You know about the religion, you know the, the, the cover keepers. ups. No, I don't know cover ups. It. Pennsylvania murder, nuns, the whole. Oh, it's in. <laughs> Wait, there's nuns. It's there's <laughs> nuns involved. You know, I think she, she might have been a nun. I, I I can't believe you don't know. Are about you sure this. that's the right name? Because now that's starting to sound familiar. Some to me, Gordon. This is where Gordon, the is, professor, if, if he's still listening. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Gordon is still listening, maybe he's going to look up the keepers for us. Here. I'll, I'll look into it because now maybe it sounds familiar, but I will look it up because we're upset. We binge like my girlfriend had never seen Ted Lasso and I wanted to start season two. She's like, yeah, but you didn't, I didn't you say you'd rewatch season one. I'm like, okay. So like last, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday, 
we put it on, and you can watch the entire season in like four hours. Have you watched Ted Lasso? I haven't done that one yet. It's really fun. It's up for, I think it's set the record for most Emmy nominations. It's up for like 20 Emmy nominations, but it's good. You see, uh, uh, what do we uh, got? Gordon brought this up on the... The Keepers. And by the way, he has it across the room in a font <laughs> where... <laughs> And that, I think, he's making it bigger. That, there that, we go. I've never heard of an eight-point font, but that, he's got an eight-point <laughs> font up here. I'm well, he's made it, but there is a none. So that yes, the and keeper, it says and Netflix. It, I told you this is an amazing documentary. All right, and it's um, it's an unsolved murder of this uh, like Sister Catherine or whatever. Now it sounds familiar. In now 1969, that you say that, yep. I'm telling you. Yep. So you're going to watch that. I'll watch Ted Lasso. Yeah, Ted and Lasso's I, great. I, I do want to hear, when I ran into you one time. I was uh, supporting my friend John Dorenboss, yeah. who made it, I think he came in third uh, with America's Got Talent. We yeah. were there the whole way. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were so nice to me, by the way. That made, I meant that, it. I was that, standing that, from stage. I know you were going to say. That made my life. I love stuff like that. I'm sitting there. I was actually with the president of the Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles. That was even better. Oh, my God. Way. Great. And I'm very tight with them. Yeah. I probably owe you money now. Right. <laughs> because uh, of all the- Just of give all me the, a couple gigs. We're fine. I have okay. a, produce, a producing deal with them. I, oh, my I, God. It's on Amazon right now. But it's, oh, yeah. I've, yeah it's I saw you Wolfpack. And, you know, so it started with me hanging with them, watching Doran Boss, who was on the Philadelphia Eagles. So then you were the warm up guy. You go, hey everybody! You know, during the break, it's Craig Schumacher. You did it in front of my kids. I, was I did. Awesome. I was like, he's one of the best stand ups. Oh see my ever. god, my them. kids! And they're all going, no, he's not. Jeff Dunham is. <laughs> I mean, that's the way. Do you think you think my kids are going? Yes, we agree <laughs> with you. It's a nightmare. You're, the family is never behind. You know, I walk in our house. Uh, four kids, they turn their chairs like they're judges on The Voice. <laughs> yeah, that's how quick, boom, they just turn around. It, it's like they, they're so not into, but they do benefit from, like, some celebrity stuff. Like, that time, yeah. you know, being in the front oh, row yeah, for John Doran Boss, for America's Got to. By the way, we do watch the show a lot. Did someone take your material that was yeah, what, on the what, show? What happened, and you can, this is a thing you Googled, and I've never talked about this on any sort of podcast because I was forbidden by NBC attorneys to talk about this. And now you're <laughs> off the show. You can talk about it. Okay. Yeah, I'm get, I, I, am I, I getting a scoop and exclusive? I think you're getting an exclusive I will promote here. this. This and is I'll, awesome. I'll tell that what happened was I was doing warm-up for AGT, and I was going through a divorce. It was just a low point. I'm doing it, and I, I was having a good time, and I'm, I, I would go there, and at least it would be fun. I mean, we were doing these in Pasadena at the convention center, and, you know, sometimes we have, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. It's packed. This is before it got to uh, Dolby Center or whatever it's yeah, called now where I right. saw you. But anyway, so I would look at the roster. I'd, I'd look to see who's on the show, and I'd always look for comics. You know, I'd get sure. there and see, and I'd be like, oh, okay, good. Oh, I don't know this person. Or, oh, good, I'm going to pull for them. And I'm going to, and right before, if it's a friend of mine or someone I know, I'm going to really try to build the crowd. Hey, when you see this next guy, he's great. So I saw this name scheduled after dinner, and I went up to the EP, and I said, I said, so this guy's on the show? He okay. goes, oh, yeah. And I go, I didn't think he had 90 seconds of uh, clean material or any material. Because mm -hmm. I didn't like the guy to start with, right? So he goes, no, no, he's got this really funny bit. It's great. He's, and I said, okay, whatever. So I would do got to be really clean <clears throat> and in 90 seconds. And 90 seconds. Almost you impossible. Grab. It's really tough. Yeah. So well, I there's would. There's never been a winner. Has it been a committee? Right. They, they, some have gone far, but yeah, yeah. They, they want they want more flash. So anyway, I, uh, I'm downstairs and all of a sudden, sometimes I like to run upstairs to the balcony when an axe on and, you know, give them T-shirts and just let them know that they're part of the show so they don't feel. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times when I'm down, they can't see me. They can hear me. So when I come up, like if it's like, a, you know, big kids group, they get a big thrill, right? Mm -hmm. So I go up on stage and this guy comes out and uh, he starts he starts this setup. And I'm up there talking with people quietly because, you know, the show's it's going on. And I go, boy, that setup sounds familiar, right? <laughs> and I go, holy shit. And then he busts into the bit. And I'll, I'll get to the bit in a second. So it's totally mine. So I fly, run down the stairs. I run down, and I walk right Does up to- Does he know you're there, by the way? No, he doesn't. No. Oh, I'll get to that. So wow. I run up to the judging tables, and it's and this is when Howard Stern was on. So it's Stern and Howie Mandel and Simon, and I forget who- And Howie would not be happy with this right. if you tell Howie. So yeah. I'm standing. So they're now, so now uh, they're doing the post-interview after he's performed, and he does great, and the people love it. So they're talking to him, and he's oh, he holding, did great, and he got all uh, yeah, <clears throat> he got he got, he got all yeses. They're starting well, they're starting to get to that. You're and interrupting I, this? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't give a shit. I was oh so my god, this is well, balls. I run down, well, I run down, and the judges are talking, but I have now. And by the way, when we're rolling, I'm never that close to the judges. Of table, course right? not. 
So I'm standing there and I'm looking and I'm trying to get his face, you know, and I'm trying to see his face and all this. And Howie sees me. And I've worked with Howie for three, four years. So Howie looks over and sees something's wrong. And I look at Howie and I mouth to him. I go, that's my bit. That's mine. That's and mine. And Howie's going, there's something wrong here. And Howie's like kind of looking and he, and he stops whoever was talking. He goes, hey, uh, uh, this person's name. He goes, so listen, he goes, you know, and, and Howie's seen me before, right? And Howie goes, you know, when you were doing that, I, I thought it was something I'd kind of seen before, whatever. He goes, I think, you know, our warm-up. This is on the air. Uh, the, well, the rolling. He goes, this is, uh, it, th this seems like something that uh, our warm-up guy right there, Frank Nicotero, does. And he turns and looks at me, ghost white. He goes white. And I look at him and I go, yeah, like that. Now, Stern is, I'm, I'm five feet from Howard Stern. And he's looking like, what? And I go, that, Howard, that's, and I've known Howard a little working with him, right? And I'm like, that's. That was my bit, right? And they're like, okay, there's a lot of confusion. Congratulations, you're moving on to Vegas. And he leaves the stage. So the producers come over. They're like, what the, what, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, this is bullshit. I'm like, Jonathan, wow. that's, you know, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. They go, just calm down. You can't do anything about it. It happened. You know, and I go to the back of the room where I stand, right? Uh, John Mendoza, comedian, uh, sure. friend of Howie's, comes over and saw me yeah. upset. And he always used to come to take, great guy. And he goes, hey, he's got, you know, he's got to let it go. I know, bullshit. I go, no, I'm not. So John I, tells you you yeah, need to goes, let it go? Yeah, he goes, I just let it go. And I go, but John, I go, it's not a one-liner. I go, it's a whole fucking bit. So I go backstage. Yeah. I go, no, fuck this. So I go backstage, and he's doing his post, post-performance post interview backstage with Nick Cannon. And uh, right in the middle, I just walk up. And I go, really, Greg? Really? And he goes, oh, come on. And I go, so I line, I go out. I start to go after him. Yeah. I filmed all this. And they separate us and whatever, whatever. So now they send me out. They go, go go back to your spot. So now I'm out in the foyer. of, And now they're following him out, like his celebration moment. And they, so we interject again, intersect again. I go, this is bullshit. I'm like, he stole it. So I'm flipping out. So boy, you have balls. Oh yeah. So I go home that and this night. This is your job. This is my job. But I'm like, but you know, it was more important than again, the job. No, they're, they're not going to protect him that much. He's right. You know, although. Well, so that yeah. night, I go home and on Facebook post this long rant about this guy, and I'll say his name for the first time. It's the Greg Wilson. This guy who has a I reputation. Actually, I was actually uh, when I was going to ask okay. if that's who it was. He's he has a reputation, and I don't give a shit for saying this. I have other comics who have told me horror stories. So anyway. I find out, so the, I post about how he stole my bed. NBC lawyers call and say, you just divulged show information. We have to let you go. But I said, this is bullshit. I said, what do you mean? Nah, 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 nah. So I come in for work the Wait, next they day. they let you go? They're going to fire me. They're like, because I yeah, gave see, away I show saw, information. That's I saw this going. Right. right. You know, well, warm -up. first of all, they go, well, you signed an NDA. I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't because as a warm up, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, maybe the union guys did, but I just get paid and I leave, or, you know, through yeah. my manager. But anyway, so they said, well, you have some high up friends at Fremantle because they're, we're, we're, they're going to keep, you're going to keep your job, but you can't say anything else about this ever again on social media. So I'm like, well, what's going to happen? They're like, well, I had sent them clips of me doing this bit on the road 10 years ago at the mm -hmm. Comedy Magic Club in Hermosa. And it's almost the same. It's Which is bit, where the Greg Wilson works a lot. Right. right. <laughs> I don't, well, I, in Hermosa. But, but plus also maybe, or also. Or is that the other Wilson? I, I don't know. No, I don't think he does. But I did the Laugh Factory, okay. and, and I know I've been on the show with him at the Laugh Factory many times. You know, mm -hmm. we're on the list. So I, uh, so he starts, he starts coming after me on social media. This fucking guy, this and that, and and he's like, he's like, oh, why don't you get back in your Corolla and drive back to your apartment in North Hollywood? And I didn't want to jab back because, by the way, I had a house with a pole and a BMW. I didn't want to like one. But NBC said, cease and just says, don't bait this guy. So then all my friends are going after him, going, fuck you, you're, fu you saw, and and I'm posting videos of me doing it. NBC. He's claiming it. It's oh, yeah, his he's bit. claiming, but it's not. And here's one of the giveaways. Backstage, after he's busted, mm -hmm. they go, oh, well, you know, what do you, what, you know, what's your comeback to this? And he goes, okay, well, well, I'll go out and do a different 90 minutes. That right there to seconds. me, admissions guilt. That's like saying, well, no, if, it's, if, if he felt like it was really his bit, then he would be like, no, I'm sure. fighting for it. If he went, oh, okay, no. And the stage manager who was with him said, when he saw you on stage mm. or off stage, he said he turned, he turned fucking white. Right. So what they did was, they, they swept it all under the, the thing. And then what they do in Vegas at the time with AGT was they would have everyone they approve, but then they would show the judges on like these private jets flying to Vegas going, we have too many people. We have to cut some of the acts that we put through. And this happens to comics a lot. Oh, I've heard show. it. Yeah. yeah that they, I, I didn't realize that. That they get standing ovations. I talked to or, someone that got all all yeses. Yeah, yeah. And then they get and cut. Yeah. Completely cut. Like you never even see them. A magician, a friend of mine, a Pittsburgh a magician. But, you yeah. know, that's the number crunching. And it's a, they're making a TV show. So they right. know they got to fill some And they also have to go with the best story. Yeah, and, of course. You know. So they bring out one group. And there's the group. And they say, look, um, 
you know, look, we, we reviewed the tapes and you know what, unfortunately, even though you guys passed, we're, you're not going any further, farther. And uh, he started to pipe up like on stage and they went, nope. And they just swept him off. And he's gone. And the funniest thing is... Edited it out. Never made the But that shit never... Yeah, they never even used it. They filmed it, but they just went, okay, you're the reject group, you're gone. So the funniest thing... They have a group of rejects. Well, yeah, it's like there's usually like 12 to 15 that have passed, but they just go... We don't, you know, we don't have room. I mean, that stuff's all on air. It, that might have been on air when they kind of never saw that before. It was back when they used to do Vegas Week, and they haven't done Vegas Week in oh, maybe. Oh, okay. This might be like ten years ago. So yeah, the show's changed. You know, yeah. it's evolved. Okay. And by the way, everyone over there is great. I, I love them all because they really did have my back. Like everyone was like, "Look, we saw that it's the yeah. same thing," and you know, and he wasn't good enough, and especially if it's going to be this whole thing. So I remember the next day when I went there, I was all fired up. One of the cameramen comes over and goes, "Listen, I've worked on this show for ten years." That is the greatest thing I've ever shot backstage. I'm, you know, and I said, yeah. I said, I went after the guy, right? I'm like, and they had to hold me back. And he goes, well, actually, it was the stage manager, Tammy, just took her hand like this. <laughs> just just kind of gently held you. And I'm like, no, I was held back by all the security guys, like Simon Security. Like, no, no, it was just, just Tammy, gently. So, uh, you know, so it's, I, I've never seen the guy. I, I told Club, I went, I went on a big rant. And then all these comics would come up to me, like, at the laugh, is this true? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, you're that guy. And I, by the way, all the friend requests after I did that posting, I had like 100 friend requests. And, you know, you never recognize some of the names. But every photo was a comic in front of a brick wall. It was all these comedians sure. who were going, yeah, yeah. And then I heard two other stories and other stories. And a guy, a, a comedian who's very popular at the Laugh Factory said, look, I lived in New York when, when Greg lived in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, I left New York to come to L.A. And then I come back for Christmas, and a couple of comics go, hey, he's, he's doing like half your act. Wow. And this guy goes, confronts him. So he goes up to him and says, hey, man, I hear you're doing my act. And this guy's comeback was, well, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like, if someone dies, we can just start doing, uh, we can start doing Don Rickles jokes. So, I, look, he has a bad reputation. I've never seen the guy again. I, I've played a couple clubs, and if I see him on the, if he's going to be, well, actually, he doesn't really play a lot of the eight rooms anymore, in my opinion, because I think they... Whatever. No, I don't think so at all. So I saw, and I just said, uh, it was a comedy club I was, I was doing, so I just said, never put me on the bill with them. That's all I said. If I ever saw him, I would just laugh at him and be like, I, you know, because if you Google it, it's the first thing that pops up. And here's really where it got big, or the reason it got out there also was a guy was there, some uh, big famous internet blogger was there to talk about Howard Stern. He's like, Howard Stern doing TV. And the guy starts off going, look, I'm here to cover Howard and talk about Howard's fine. Yeah. Because something happened. He goes, I don't know if it was set up or all a stage thing, which it wasn't. No. But this thing happened. And this guy wrote a big article. And then that got all the hits and kind of went viral, that article. And they'd show the bit side by side. It's, if you've seen me or if you haven't, it's a bit that I, I started in Pittsburgh. I hadn't even, I don't even do, I do like when I'm doing a long show on the road. I haven't mm -hmm. done it in L.A. in years. But uh, long you gonna give us the bit? No, it, well, it's it's I can't even I can't even say you don't it. Remember because, your own bit? No, 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 because it's all a pantomime bit that I usually closed with about a guy and a girl in a car having a fight after a night out. Uh -huh. So I kind of play the guy and the girl and everything you go he through does and how this they make up. For bit, the setup, mime by mime. <laughs> when I'm upstairs, I hear the setup and I go, oh, well, "That's kidding. the exact way I set up." Like you know, oh, your windows are up, their windows are up, but you you can tell what's going on. He's using like those same mm. words. And that's when I start flying downstairs. And by the time I get down there, he's doing the bit. Not nearly as good and not nearly mm -hmm. as long because it needs a little, mm -hmm. I need to make it breathe. He's trying to squeeze it into a minute. But it's clearly the same bit. And then some other podcasts went off and then we're saying, oh, well, just do it. Like Joe Rogan did it on his thing when it was a big thing. And he's like, oh, well, it's terrible anyway. Why the fuck's this guy care? And that guy sucks too. And, you know, whatever. So it turned into this big thing that oh, I never yeah. wanted. But uh, I can't. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about because uh, it wasn't a one liner. It was a whole com chunk. comedians. It's a, it's a strange it's a strange fraternity sorority. Yes, that it's it is one of those. Do I really want to be in this? Yeah, club. Yeah, because of things like yeah, that, the negativity and the attacks and things. But you the know. positivity that came out of all the guys backing me up, coming out telling me horror stories yeah. about this guy, or right. just sharing their own stories of what they've been through. And I said, look, if it was a one liner or a quick thing that I did, I'd be like, eh, somebody else could have thought about it. See, there you go. The professor brought it up. So I just said, but this was kind of my closer on the road for years, sure, yeah. and I've done it all around LA for ten years. 
And yeah. all of a sudden he's claiming like all of a sudden he has this new bit. And it's just funny when I hark back to the producer going, oh, yeah, he's got this really great bit. It kills. And I'm going, oh, wow, uh, I, I don't believe it, but I'll see it. Well, of course wow. it did well. Oh, geez, that's crazy. So, and, I, and if you weren't there, you would have seen it on television. That's the thing. That exactly. It, and that's and the he might thing. have actually gone might on in advance. Exactly. And that's the odd. Based on someone else's material and someone else's material, and depending friends on how of far mine con, And my friends, friends of mine constantly say, they're like, what are the odds that you're in that room? And I said, I don't know, a million to one. The million, million to one. million to one. And the yeah. fact that I went up and he sees me and just goes white. Like, I would love, I've never seen any of the footage. I'd love to see the confrontation backstage. I would have loved to have seen that. And I can understand why it doesn't fit into the show and, you know, whatever. Although it would have been good drama. It would have been kind of interesting. But maybe people would have thought it was just so unbelievable that it wasn't real. But I think it was real. I think he's pulling up on the computer here. Yeah, and that's the guy who wrote the where's, bit. Where's the guy? Where's the guy? Uh, where's the Greg Wilson? Is he in the, in the next... <laughs> Does it have him? Um, no, I, I think there's a, that's me doing it. And then that's you doing that's the bit. him doing it somewhere like wherever that club is. Do you even know where that club is? Like the Diva Club? Oh, or? wait a minute. Turn that on for a second. I'm going to see. I think this. Wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Do you know that club? No, I know him. Yeah, that's him. Oh, wow. I have to tell you, I will admit. Yeah. He's in a movie that a friend of mine just did, and he's very good. I, I listen, hate to tell Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Look, and I, he was on like an episode. He's on like a Christmas episode of Modern Family. He plays an elf, and anytime times come on. No, I love that's that a show. different guy than I thought. Okay, yes, I know you who sure? that is. But no, that, yeah, I just saw him in my friend's uh, movie. But anyway. Hey, he was a look, producer. I, yeah. I just had, a, I had a, this guy. He was just on the rise, and he and people said he took two bits. Another guy's really famous, not, and both are really famous. Took bits of mine. Yeah, and it's like one of those things. Like I didn't have the opportunity to right. run up and well, and stop them on and, television. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that's crazy. That There's that, footage of it somewhere on NBC, possibly. Oh, but, that's that's unbelievable. But uh, you know, yeah, I've heard it. You know, I had a girl come up to me in Pittsburgh once who goes, "I went on a first date with a guy." And uh, he did your jokes, like trying to impress her, you know, and it was funny. Like, that doesn't bother you, but, you know. No, no. All, you don't think that people use the Love Master lines? Oh, my I'm, God. I've actually, I'm responsible for births. Absolutely. Like, a yes. lot of births have happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, from people doing the Love when Master. When I saw you did two weeks ago, I was dying, man. It's still, it's still. Oh, that's there. right. You came to see me. I came and saw you, man. But. Um, that's great about the Love Master. I could just change the lines. That's great. The, the one that stuck with me was, are you a real estate agent? Is this a lot? Or whatever. <laughs> that fuck, I died. I was in the back of the room dying. And, but um, that have, was just my too, favorite? I have a favorite. That was too close. One. Oh, to my me. new one is. Um, it's funny. But I was driving with my wife, uh -huh. and uh, does not laugh at me. <laughs> and did your? Did, you talked about that. Did your? Um, oh no, that's my ex-wife. That oh, was sorry. worse. Oh, okay. That was worse. <laughs> this is just like this is like subtle doesn't laugh. Yeah. But she actually chuckled. But then this is one she didn't, and I thought I think it's a good one. It's a I do a bunch of COVID ones. Right. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Six feet social distance. Six feet. That's just the tip. <laughs> I yeah. think that's a good that's joke. Great. It's My great. wife goes, oh, I saw that coming. No, they that, killed. That, that, yeah, so, so, <laughs> she's so trained. Yes, you now. see it coming, but yes, she's, yeah. she's so trained. She knows. You know, she, yeah, knows. she knows. Now, your ex wife, right? Do you have yeah. kids? Uh, no kids. Okay. Well, that's an easy one then. Yeah. And, and my again, you have it, again, you have it easy. You have no yeah. suffering. <laughs> I think you need more suffering. No, please no. I feel like I've had enough. No, she's wonderful. We laugh all the time. That's cool. She lo she comes to every show, and I tell her, I don't want you coming to every show. I'm like, it's going to get boring. <gasps> she does? Well, I mean, wow. yeah. This and I'm must like, be new. How new is this? Four years. What? Well, yeah, I know. But, I, well, not on the, well, I did the road with that. Well, no, actually, you know, right before COVID, I, I, I was uh, headlining uh, uh, the Des Moines, Iowa Funny Bone, late February. She comes with me. We have a great week. We had the best time ever in Des Moines. And then I didn't get on stage again, you know, for like a year or whatever, indoors-wise, you know, whatever. But who would I say? And I, I mentioned on stage the first time I was at Flappers a couple weeks ago. I'd done a bunch of the outdoor ones, but there's nothing like being indoor club, right? And I just said, I said, I said, who would have thought that the highlight to my 2020 was going to be a week in Des Moines, Iowa? Which, by the way, Des Moines is a very fine city and everyone's lovely. <laughs> but that was like the highlight of the year, but... I try to tell her, don't come for like three or four sets. Let me work on some new stuff. Right. Then when you come, but she goes, no, I like seeing how you develop the bits. And, you know, I was well, that is cool. And that's kind of cool. So does she ever collaborate fan. with you? Does she ever? She does suggest stuff. And sometimes, she does? yeah, she'll throw stuff out. And I'll try go, this callback. Try yeah, this. Yeah, and she'll do that. That's and, pretty cool. You know, yeah. And, it, and but, you know, as a control freak, sometimes you're like, no, don't tell me what to do. But then she says something and you go. Uh, all right, that one would work, you know. But no, yeah. yeah. But she's, uh, yeah. I love great. when people do ads. 
They yeah. Oh, yeah. Us, you know, they come up Absolutely. and try this. It helps. I, and I, uh, yeah. who was it I just gave one to? I, en- I enjoyed the days where I had a radio show and I actually yeah. had writers. Yeah. And even though it was like a bit that I did, I still have like the, they'll come up with a little punchline that goes within the bit. Yeah. You know, it starts as like an idea, then it goes into a piece, and then a bit, and then a hunk. Yeah. So when you do the hunk, that's like everything, you know. But then yeah. you can you can implant some of these jokes all along the way, which might have been written separately from the hunk that yeah. had nothing to do with it. But it's like, oh, that's a good transition, a tr- transition joke. But does your writing process, is it a sit down um, a- at a computer uh, well, writing process the, or is it really by trial by error? When you were talking about people adding on, my dad is the one who came up when I talked about that two penis joke. He's the one who came up with the, they should put him on a double mint gum commercial. I used to just say, suffering sounds like a blessing. Good night. And we get a big laugh. He tagged that. Um, my process, a lot of note cards, a lot of three, five, three by five note cards, a lot of notebooks. Um, I don't write out verbatim. It's not, I just kind of come up with ideas and maybe bullet points. I don't think there's many. I'm more of a story guy and, you know, yeah, so me too. I don't yeah, like, so, I don't like, uh, I don't like it written in like a font or like on a computer. No, handwritten. It has to be handwritten. Still has to be handwritten. Isn't there something about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk to, you're not the one. I'm going to talk to a younger comic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not anymore. But yeah, that's I interesting. I'm going to talk to a younger comic oh, no, no. and I find the, out. I see the guys who pull up their phone. IPads, yeah, you know, like on, a, on an open mic night, they'll pull up and they'll look on their phone. Yeah. And, but I can't write like I could that. never do There's that. There's something about the pen yeah, it's because of the way we started. Yeah, and I don't know if that's it. I do. I just think there's a better connection to your brain. Absolutely. When you're not doing that, I mean, well, plus there's something that's detached about that. I plus I have a photographic memory. I was going to say I envision it in my handwriting. So if I'm forgetting exactly, a chunk, I can see. I can see it written yep. on the page. It could be anywhere. Yep. Anytime I can I tell I do, you what I made in 1989 yeah. at the Comedy Cafe. Yeah. So I remember it written. Yeah, exactly. You know, how, what it looked like on those calendars, yep. those old calendars. Oh, my God. But, but you don't have that. No. Yeah, so so I have no idea where I am like, yeah. tomorrow. Well, even anytime <laughs> I have a, a like a part in anything, like uh, um, I was fortunate during COVID, I, my, my cousin Greg is, you know, he works on the, he's one of the EPs of The Walking Dead, and he's doing Creep Show. Uh, third season comes out soon on Shudder, which is AMC's streaming service. But I was one of the leads in a, a Christmas special. Where I played a werebore, a guy who turns into a, a, pig, a werewolf pig. Anyway, this is with Adam Pally and Anna Camp. It's a funny episode. It's called Shapeshifters. Check it out, Creep Show Season 2. But I had a lot of dialogue, and it was the most I had done in a long time. So I wrote it out by hand, which I think I read Christopher Walken does. But Christopher Walken removes all punctuation. When he writes out his lines, he doesn't put any of the punctuation, which makes sense because when you see him deliver his lines, it's, yeah, it's never, you know, it's never, he doesn't follow commas or periods. So I wrote it out in my hand. So if I'm ever trying to memorize a script, instead of looking at it on a page in Helvetica or whatever it is, or Times New Roman, right. I see it in my notebook with my handwriting, and that's how I remember the next yeah. line. I remember that it's when I turned a page. Oh, it's at the end of that page. So Yes. Yeah, so that's the way I was with stand-up, too. So, no, I'm more like, give me some bullet points and, and go for oh, I'm it. I'm glad you're back on the road. What's your social Trying, media? Yeah, it's at Frank Nicotero. Oh, there you go. Trying to Nobody get back out there. That. No, you can't, can't take <laughs> Frank Nicotero. But, yeah, that's where Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Friendster, whatever the hell is out there. But Friendster is not anymore. Friendster. Friend. But I, uh, I yeah. use that reference and no Friendster, one gets yeah, it. right, because it's uh, yeah. so old. I think, yeah, right? I mean, I, well, <laughs> yeah, I, it's so funny that you would say that. <laughs> I try, you know how you have old references, sure, you know, yeah, yeah, you're still, you, you know, know. And now you have to use AOL, whatever. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm still on Friendster. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? That's how long it was. That was a big fat. That was a really that was late fast late '90s, one. I think. That was early two thousand. Really yeah, it didn't last. That Cause, well, because MySpace took it over. Which, by that's the way, true. Kids yeah. might not even and now know that's the Mike joke. Space yeah, is. Yeah. So. yeah, really, that's what it is. But yeah. but yeah, getting back out there, you know, clubs are starting to open up. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go back and do some stuff. Pitching television in the shows. Fall. Maybe we'll see yep. Street Smarts again. You never know. Frank Nicotero, best uh, best host of the uh, television game I show I've ever that, seen Chris. in history, okay? Thank you, sir. Sorry, Bob Barker. <laughs> I, I, I apologize, but Frank is better than you. <laughs> so anyway, it's a pleasure hanging with you, man. And uh, look, you brought it today. And this I was hope fun, I hope that everybody out there understands that the, this is the way this is the way we can live our lives now. We can really embrace the good and embrace the happiness. You know, I know that Frank has never suffered, but uh, <laughs> I. But if you're suffering through anything, <laughs> anything, just it's know that you can just know that you can turn it around on a dime. You can turn it around. You can actually add laughter to your life, add joy, add happiness. Go for the light. Go for the levity. 
uh, go to podcasts like ours <laughs> and spread the word on that. And now you're going to be able to knock out that darkness, okay? The light always shines. You know, the grass could be under cement and it always comes out to the light. So that's what I encourage you to do. And just remember one thing. Enlighten the fuck up. Exactly. You? I'll see you next I time. I love it.